your victory is guaranteed. Now, because some of us live a lifestyle of trusting God, we are not surprised when we get the victory. We are never caught off guard when God blesses us, promotes us, sends us better, does for us the good measure, the press, the shaking, and the running. We know from a natural standpoint growing up, some of us didn't like some of the whoopings we got at the time we got them. No, you didn't. Don't, don't, don't even sit there and act like when, 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 your, when your dad or mama pulled that belt or switch that, that you were jumping up and down saying, bring it on. No, you wasn't. You, 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 you were despising that. Am I right? Even frowning sometimes. Even the nerd to roll your eyes at your parents. Talk behind their back. Am I right? But then as you grew up, Come on, not all of us, but some of us could look back, not at all them whooping, because sometimes parents are just too quick to whoop. But, 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 but when we look back at those whoopings that we know we needed, some of us to this day, we appreciate that. Appreciate that mama didn't just let it slide. No, because if she'd have kept letting it slide, you'd have kept doing it. And so, again, you look back and you appreciate Discipline. But see, God being the ultimate father also disciplines. And like it is in the natural, some of God's children disdain or hate correction while others improve because they love it. Proverbs, the third chapter and verse number 12. Note it. For whom the Lord loves, he corrects. For whom the Lord loves, he what? Corrects. Just as a father, the son in whom he delights. You have to understand that God, because he loves us, corrects us. Because he care, he corrects us. Because he don't want me to ruin my life, he send me certain messages. Because he don't want to see you stay broke, he have the deacons to say certain things. Because of how much he desires for you to come out of certain situations, he corrects you because he, he loves you. Because some of us got it twisted. When correction come, we feel folk don't care. But sometimes correction come because of how much folk care. Are y'all with me tonight? Because God corrects directly and indirectly. Sometimes God has to use the prophet. Because some of us going to ignore him in our private prayer life. And sometimes you come to church, and if you don't know any better, it's like pastor just on me. Seems like he just ride me. No, you don't, don't ever look at it like that. Because if God, in one sense, is correcting the church, he's starting that correction with me. He's starting it with me. But I'm so mature now that I know even when God rebukes me, I know he's doing it because he loves me. Again, don't miss it. He don't want to see me mess up my life. He don't want to see me end up in ruin or see me go down a path that he know is not good for me. No, I, I want him to send correction. How many of you like that? If you about to mess up, you want correction. Be careful. Oh, be careful. But raise your hand if you mean it tonight. If you about to mess up and do what you ain't got no business doing, how, how many want some correction? Woo, look around and folk got their hand up. Lord, have mercy. Okay, put your hand down. I'm glad some of you didn't raise your hand. I, I appreciate your honesty tonight. I really do. Some folk didn't raise their hand. And some who raised their hand, I don't know why you did so. Because you know good and well you don't like correction. And the fact that you can sit in church and raise your hand saying you do is an indication of how strong-willed you are when it comes 
to rebelling against God. Because it's God talking to you about you, yet you're going to pretend to be something that you're not. Sometimes you have to recognize, even if I ask the question, if you know that ain't you, don't raise your hand. Just know in that area, I must get better. I have to improve in receiving correction because some of you know you don't like it because of how you go out of your way to avoid it. And I'm going to show you in the scripture tonight. Some of us talk to certain people we talk to because you know they will not correct you. They won't tell you what you really need to hear. And you won't dare go to a person who you know is going to get into you. You won't do it. Folk can tell you, you need to go do such and such. You won't dare do it. Why? You don't want that correction. But a be buddy buddy with somebody who won't dare tell you about yourself. Sometimes, like it or not, we need folk who are going to be honest with us about us. Be honest with what they see. Come on. You need that in your life. If everybody around you is singing your praises, yet you know you're not deserving of the praises that they sing, that's going to hinder your growth or your productivity. Right? And some folk can get ready to step and are unsure about what they are, are going to do and won't seek wise counsel. We'll move and do it without talking to anybody. What, what was it that made the person step being unsure without seeking wise counsel? A lot of time, didn't want the correction. Sometimes improvement or betterment comes by way of rebuke or correction. So if that's the case and it's biblical, we can't despise it. We can't have a disdain for what God says will improve or help us. You have to learn whatever level you may be on to start growing in the area of receiving correction. Are, are, are you here tonight? Because listen, folk who hate correction will not improve. They won't improve. Look, look, look at the scripture again. Proverbs 3 and 12. Lord have mercy. For the Lord, for whom the Lord loves, he what? So sometimes I know God loved me by the way he what? I know he loved me by the way he what? That means sometimes I can preach certain messages where a, your neighbor may be getting mad because of what I'm saying. But you sitting there knowing God loving on me right now. Boy, I went to Bible study last night. God was loving all on me. <laughs> we laugh because most of us, we don't see it that way. We, we don't see it that way. Look at Proverbs 13. Just flip a couple of books over. Proverbs 13 chapter. Please hang in here. Be patient with me tonight. Proverbs 13, 18, because there's no way to preach this. Proverbs 13, 18, poverty and shame, disappointment, will come to him who disdains correction. Poverty and shame. Who in here want poverty and shame? Let me see your hand. Because if you want it, Something seriously wrong with you. Yeah, we're going to make this, this word right here so simple. A wayfaring fool. We're leaving. So I know exactly what he was saying tonight. Poverty and shame will come to him or her who disdains what? So none of us want poverty or shame. If you say you don't want poverty or shame, you're indirectly saying you love correction or you're willing to receive it. Hold on. Hold on. Lord have mercy. It's like I lost some folk. Proverbs 13, 18. Poverty and shame will come to him who disdain or hates correction. If I don't want poverty and shame, I need to learn not to hate correction. 
Because if I hate it when it comes from God, directly or indirectly, I'm going to end up in poverty or shame. You, you'll have a wonderful outcome for your life or how you see your life turning out. But if you hate correction, you, even with that good master plan that you have designed, get, guess what, guess what you're going to run into sooner or later? Disappointment. Why? You, 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 you take anybody who reached a certain level of productivity or success who got their right mind or got good sense or in line with the word, they're going to tell you about the times God corrected them. Listen, I, I want to go so far as to tell you, they're going to tell you about the time they thought they was right. Thought they had Bible to back up their thinking, but then God sent correction and simply said, don't do it that way, do it this way. They simply stopped doing it that way, started doing it his way, and started prospering. Some of you don't have no 10 steps how you came out. You just took correction in reference to your thinking or your behavior. Start doing it God's way and then God start bringing you out. That's how some of you went from being depressed to being happy, applying instruction, being willing to be corrected. But if you don't want poverty or shame, you can't hate correction. Somebody has to tell you. Amen? Amen. Sometimes it's your pastor. Sometimes it's your spouse. Sometimes it's a brother or sister in the church who is led by the Holy Spirit to do so. Yeah, you got to say that because some of us think we the, we, we the police. We, 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 we think we've we been put in charge of correcting folk. And folk like that, the main one need correcting. Amen? We teaching tonight. Because some of us have been on the same road for years. And you keep trying to convince folks it's a trial. There ain't no trial. You ain't receiving correction. Could have been off that road. Could have been off that path. But, but, but you didn't want to receive tough love. Oh, God. I'm going to have to say something tonight. See, some folks want to be praised. When they need to be rebuked. They don't need to be praised. Your decisions need to be dealt with. You need to be confronted about your decision making. You don't know what I'm going through. May not know in totality what you're going through. But a wise person can sometimes quickly spot the mistakes of fools. You can see folk do stuff that you know with the wisdom God has given you that they do not know what they're doing and don't want to be taught. Church is only good to the point to where you're teachable. A simple message like this, a person start being God conscious, start receiving instructions, God start bringing them out tonight. Oh, y'all see, y'all missed that. I see he started bringing them out tonight. Tonight, because they stopped having a disdain for correction. So some that hate it, guess where they at tonight? In poverty and in shame. All this word come forth about giving. But the only thing you want to do is fight it. You're going to stay in poverty. Until you learn not to fight the word. 